What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender quick tip for you. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about some options for merging vertices together inside of Blender. So this can be great for getting rid of extra vertices in your model as well as creating different kinds of shapes by merging vertices. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so tip one is if you want your vertices to merge, you can turn on auto merge. And so let's say for example that we have this cube in here. I'm just to tab into it and select one of the vertices. And we're going to go ahead and turn on snapping and we're going to set snapping to vertex just for this video. And so what we want to do is we want to move this vertex around. So notice how if I use the move tool to move it and then place it on top of this object, they're not actually merging, right? It's just that now you have multiple different vertices stacked on top of each other. Well, that can get messy for a lot of different reasons. So it's a lot of stuff to kind of keep track of and then making edits doesn't really make a lot of, a lot of sense either. And so what you can do is there's a couple options in here for ways that you can merge those vertices into a single vertex instead of just having them occupy the same space but remain separate. So the easiest way to do that is going to be to go up to the top of your page in Blender 2.9. There's an option in here for auto merge vertices. And so if we turn on auto merge vertices, you can see how it tells us it's going to merge vertices that live in the same location. So now if I was to move this vertex over here, and then move it around, notice how these have merged so that this is a singular vertex now and all of the faces that are connected to it are adjusting in that way. So you can use that to really quickly merge vertices together um, inside of Blender. And so another way to do this instead of going up to your auto merge is if you go into your active tool and workspace settings under options, there's an option in here for auto merge. Well, within auto merge, there's another interesting option that I was really interested in because I come from SketchUp originally. This works a lot the same way that SketchUp did. Um, there's a box that you can check that says split edges and faces. And so we're going to uncheck that for a second just to take a look at this. So um, right now within Blender, and let's go ahead and add some edge snapping to our snapping just by doing a shift click. So right now in Blender, if you were to take this one vertex and extrude it and move it somewhere on this edge, right, like this, and then you were to go into face select mode by tapping the three key, Well, notice how this is still a singular face, right? The, even though you drew an edge across this face, this is still a single face in here. Well, if you were to undo this, and let's say that we were to check this box for split edges and faces. Well, now what that's going to do is if I extrude this vertex and use that to draw a line across this face, then I type the three key. Notice how that edge that I drew splits this face. So you can use this to really quickly add face geometry inside of Blender. And I know a ton of people are gonna come in here and say that it messes up the quads and all of that. In a lot of cases, you are correct. So just be aware of what you're doing. There's a lot of cases where that doesn't really matter. In this situation, um, I'm not really super worried about that. So you could use this in order to create multiple splits across multiple different faces to get more editable geometry in here. All right, so for tip three, let's go into the cylinder and select all of these vertices. Let's say we wanted this to become a cone instead of a cylinder. And so what you could do is you could scale these all in to the center. You could tap S and then hit the zero key. And as long as we have the merge vertices set up, these are gonna merge together. Right? But there's also a different tool set in here that allows you to do that really quickly. So if you select this and you tap the M key, you're gonna get a bunch of merge options in here. It's gonna give you options for merging at center, at cursor, and collapse. And so let's say we wanted this to come to a point, you could just tap the M key, do at center, like this, and it's gonna merge all of those together. So same thing would work over here. Right? If I was to select all of these vertices and do an M, merge at center, that's going to allow you to merge all of those in at the central point between all of those vertices. So you can use that to really quickly merge your vertices inside of Blender. So in addition, um, let's say that we didn't have auto merge turned on. right? And let's say that we had a shape, we'll just add maybe a UV sphere. Let's say we had a ton of vertices that were on top of each other. It's just kind of a mess, right? Something like this. But if 
you were to click on this, notice how these are still all individual vertices, right? So you have a ton of vertices that are just kind of stacked on top of each other. Um, another example of this is if you were to take a face and tap the E key to extrude it and then decide you didn't want to do that and hit escape. Well, if you tab in here, go to vertex select mode, notice how it creates that extra face in here, even though you didn't really want it, right? As soon as you tap the E key, it creates that, uh, that additional vertex and just leaves it on top of here. So what we can do though, is we can clean all of this up using a tool called Merge by Distance. And that's also contained inside of the Merge tool set that we had in here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna select all of these. So I'm just gonna tap A, then tap the M key. Well, notice how here we have options in here for um, what we talked about before, plus an at first and at last. That has to do with the uh, the selection order that you selected everything. But there's also an option for merge by distance. And so merge by distance is gonna allow you to merge everything based on how far apart they are. So notice how right now, when I did this, the whole thing went away. That's because my merge distance was set to something really high, right? Well, you can adjust that over in this menu right here. You can set it to something really low and then hit the enter key. Well, if you do that, then click off of here. Notice how now you don't have that extra geometry in here. Like you don't have that extra face. All of those have been merged um, because they were in the same location. So what that did is that merged everything that has a certain distance between it into a single vertex. So in addition, you can also do some interesting things in here by adjusting that distance. So notice how when I merge this by distance with everything selected, the higher this is, the more the vertices are getting merged together. So you can do some interesting things to your shapes by playing around with that as well. All right, and the last tip is you might've noticed that this doesn't work with objects that are separate from each other, right? So if I was to tab into edit mode, make sure that I have merge vertices selected and then move this across, Notice how these don't merge together, right? The reason they don't merge together is because these objects are separate. So they're, they're their own separate objects up here. They're not in the same, they're not joined or anything like that. So you're just gonna select these and you're either gonna do a control J or you're gonna go up to object and you're gonna click on join. And so notice how when you join those, it join these together into a single mesh. Well now, if I was to tab in here, move this across, these vertices are going to merge. So you can join those objects together into a single mesh in order to get your objects or your vertices to merge using these tools. So that's from it in this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.